everybody, this is Catherine from In The Pink Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so all the products that you see you can purchase from Stampin' Up! through the address that's at the top of the screen, and it's also linked below. My project today is this rectangle box that measures three and a half by two and a quarter by one. Opens like this, and I fit three little fun size candies in there and I think it's pretty cute I used the scary cute stamp set the scary silhouette dies and the st stylish shapes dies alrighty along with some celebrate everything designer series paper okay what we need for this project is a piece of gorgeous grape that is seven and a half by five and a half. So you can get two of these from each sheet of cardstock. We need five pieces of the Celebrate Everything DSP. One that is three and a quarter by two, two that are three and a quarter by three quarters, and two that are two by three quarters. Okay, all these measurements will be on my blog. I cut this die from the Stylish Shapes dies along with this one and the square. The square is approximately one and a half inches, okay? So if you don't have the Stylish Shapes dies, you can just do strips and a one and a half inch square. All right, we also need some of the small bats out of basic black and a moon from Daffodil Delight. Okie dokie. So this is my host code just till Friday, okay? Um, on the weekend, I will have a new host code up. Okay, if you spend less than $150, please put that in and I can send you a little something. Okie doke. So... We are going to start on the seven and a half inch side and we're going to score at one, three and a quarter, four and a quarter, and six and a half. Turn it to the five and a half inch side and we're going to score at one and at four and a half. That's it for scoring. And excuse my hand is, is kind of funky because I got between a fight with my two dogs and I got bit. <laughs> so this just this morning. So this is um, not feeling so great. But it's okay. It doesn't need stitches. Thank goodness. Okay. And this is what we're going to do. Okay, don't worry about these diagonal pieces. We're going to do them last. All right. Okay, so we're going to start on the bottom left. And we're going to go to the first score line, cut it to the first score line, and wedge each side of the square. Go to the next score line, cut it to the first score line, next score line, cut it to the first score line and then wedge each side of the square. Okay, we're going to leave this alone for now. So we're just going to go to the next score line, cut it to the first score line and then cut this square off. Okay, and that's our first side. We're going to turn it to the other side. And we're going to start on the bottom left again. We're going to go to the first score line, cut it to the first score line, and then we're cutting off this square here. Okay, go to the next score line, cut it to the first score line, next score line, cut it to the first score line, and wedge both sides of this square. Go to the next score line, Cut it to the first score line and wedge both sides of this square. Okay, now how we have this is that the flap is on the right hand side. Okay, we're going to go from the bottom and what you can do 
is take your ruler and go from the bottom. Okay, go from this flap here. And you can just do this with your scissors if you do not want to go through making a mark. You could just cut it if you know which way you're going. Okay, and then on the same one, you're going to start where the flap is, put it right at that point there, and then have it go up to the point on the other side of the rectangle. Okay, and that's what you have to follow with your scissors. Now, if you're just going to do it freehand without putting your marks, you're just going to start at the corner next to this flap, and you're going to point it at this corner at the top of the other side of the same rectangle. Okay, same thing on this one. You start at the corner next to this flap and go up to the other side. I'm going to do that one more time because I left a little bit. Right to the corner of the other side of the rectangle. And if it's not exactly straight, it's fine. Okay. Now we're going to take the corner rounder and round both sides of this flap. Okay. All right. And we're also going to take a small little part of a circle out of the flap that has the tabs attached for a little grip. Okay, and this is what your cardstock should look like after you're done cutting it, and scoring it and cutting it. Now we need some tear and tape, and we're going to put two pieces on each tab, okay? One on by the score line and one up by the, t the edge on all four. Okay, I'm going to get my take your pick tool. Let's start over here and I'm going to take all of the backings off on the strip. Okay, and we're going to fold it and we're going to take the score line on the tab and make it straight with the rectangle side. Okay, and then we're going to do the next ones. Okay, and then how it's going to close is these will come in and then just tuck in the flap. And there's your box. Oops. Okie doke. Okay, now. Let's let that sit a minute. Okay, we're going to get our DSP. We need one piece that is three and a quarter by two. That goes on the top. Two pieces that are three and a quarter by three quarter for the long sides. And two pieces that are two by three quarter for the short sides. And I'm going to use liquid glue on all of them. Okay, now let's let that dry and we're going to just do a little bit of stamping. I'm using this, oh no, this little guy image from Scary Cute. And the one and a half inch rectangle. Okay, I'm going to use some tu tuxedo black ink and I'm going to use a stamp. Get a lot of ink on there. You could use your stamp and stamparatus too if you want to do it several times. I'm just going to put them towards the bottom in the middle. All right. Now we need these two t 
tags. This tag is about two and three quarters long. And this one is about two and one quarter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue the little guy right in the middle of this gorgeous grape one. I'm going to use my mat. All right, so I'm just going to put some glue right about, leave about a quarter inch on each side. I'm just going to put him, just center him. Okay, and then we're going to put That's good. We're just going to put the orange one right behind it. So this time, we'll just do this. Right, and I'm just going to center that one too. Get it on there and then make sure it looks right on the front. See that? Okay. Now I'm just going to use some dimensionals. I'm going to put one at this end, one at this end, and one on the top, and one on the bottom. thing we have to do is you see how the paper overlaps a little you can put the paper on first before you take your little half circle or piece of a circle out I'm just gonna quick go in there and take it again all right and then these let's put our Kit Kats are perfect you probably put two Kit Kats and the Twix in there. I'm just using a Hershey bar. Okay, and then these go in the side, and that goes down like that. All right. Now all we have left to do is put our little embellishments on. Okay, we only need two bats. So first let's put our moon on. And I'm going to be using the other side of my Take Your Pick tool, the sticky side, and just a little bit of liquid glue. Okay, I'm going to take the moon. I'm just going to get a little bit on it. I'm going to put it in the top left corner above the little guy. Okay, and get the two smaller bats if you can. I think they're almost the same, but there's one that's much larger. And I'm going to put the small one right here behind him. And the big one right up above him. Okay, we get, I'll just wipe this off, okay, and for the final touch we're just going to tie a small bow with black and white gingham ribbon. And we're going to put it up over here. And I'm just going to put glue dots on the sides of the knot and a dab of liquid glue in the middle. 
this kind of roll it a little because this is a smallish bow. And then I'm just going to put a tiny dab of glue right in the middle on the back of the knot. I'm just going to put it right up there. And the glue dots will hold it for now and then the glue will make sure that it really sticks later even if it gets heated up a little bit in the sun or something. All right, and I lied. One more final touch. I'm just going to put a little bit of Wink of Stella on the bats. Okay. And that's it. I hope you like this. It's not too hard, except for the diagonal, but when you do that last, it's not hard at all. Okay, if you have any questions, my email is below. The link to my blog is there with all the measurements and the link to purchase at my Stampin' Up! shop. If you'd like to join my team, uh, you usually get three months to make a minimum. You get the 20% discount, $99 for $125 worth of products plus a free paper pumpkin and you get free shipping. Usually you will get three months, which is the normal, three months to make your 300 quota. Now you can let it expire and keep your discount until it expires and there's no penalties, but or you can wait until a week or two into the next quarter, which starts on October 1st. Okay, and then you would get your, it's your first full quarter. So you're already into this one. So you would have till the end of December, of March, okay? So if you join right now, before October 1st, you have until December 31st, okay? If you wait until next week, you would have until the end of March, okay? Because that would be your first full quarter. Okay, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye.